and I would go to any name school. Martin Luther King is fine. That, that, that doesn't matter to me, especially Martin Luther King, because, you know, I, I highly admire that what he accomplished in his lifetime it was amazing. Uh, and I think he's probably one of the most venerated, uh, well-known uh, figures in the history of, of African Americans and the black race. I, I just think he's a, he's a wonderful example. So I would I would be happy to have my grandkids going to Martin Luther King School. Welcome back into the program. As always, like and subscribe if you do want to help me fight the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. We definitely need your help with that, and the best way to do that is to like this video and subscribe to my channel really messes with their heads when they see that there are people that are watching conservative content. Now, my next guest is someone who has been on the show a couple of times before. They are a representative from District 31 of the state of Alabama. Now, uh, for those of you who aren't aware, that's going to be the Wetumpka area. But without further ado, we'll go ahead and bring on to the program Mike Holmes. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Caleb. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, being generous with your time. And for those of uh, those in the audience that may not know, there was a controversial, and, and I'm using air fingers quote there, uh, there was a controversial bill that, or sorry, a controversial conversation that happened between you and Representative John Roberts the other day uh, when you were discussing the monument protection bill that you put forward. And one of the things that he said was, some people don't want to go to Andrew Jackson high or Andrew Jackson school and uh, talking about the Confederate general there. And then you said, well, some people may not want to go to Martin Luther King school. And so uh, this caused all kinds of upheaval and, and people calling you racist from the uh, AL.com to Alabama political reporter with Josh Moon. And so I just wanted to ask you just sort of get your side of the story. Uh, when you said, other people don't want to go to Martin Luther King School. What exactly did you mean by that? What were you referencing well, there? Let, let me restage it. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of errors in there that we need to correct. Number okay. one, it was Representative John Rogers from Birmingham, not Roberts. Not John, I'm Roberts. sorry. I was thinking of the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Sorry, now, me, me, mental uh, error on my part. And the next next thing was this was uh, he had been uh, John Rogers had been. Uh, Supposedly, in a uh, public hearing, you're asking questions of the of the bill sponsor, and mm. of course, I was standing at a podium, and uh, and he had been going on with. Um, actually, it was it was just a long, not a dialogue, just a long monologue of, of things that were wrong with the, our nation today, our state today, and it had nothing to do with the bill. It was mm. all about racism, and he he made a statement that I've I've got I've got this beautiful granddaughter. Mm. He says. What you think? You do you think I want my my beautiful granddaughter? And I'm going to go slow here because I'm doing this from memory. You want my beautiful beautiful granddaughter to go to school at a uh, Stonewall Jackson school? And uh, of course, he just hung there and he he filled the silence by saying, "I want name it name it Martin Luther King, name it um, John Lewis School." And uh, then I, I I would think about that, and, and then it was just silence. So you know. When you're in a situation like that, the best thing to do is just remain silent, which I didn't. I let it 15 or 20 seconds go by, and I assumed he was done. So I asked him a question. It was not a statement. It was a question. I said, Representative Rogers, could you, could you agree that there are pre probably people out there that would not want their children to go to a Martin Luther King school? And he muttered, I don't know. You might be right. And that never got on any recording. <laughs> That, right. So it, was, it was not a heated exchange. It was he and I. Neither, neither one of us had lost our tempers. It was it was just a simple question that I asked. Him. Yeah, so and, that, and, and that's, that's, that's the true side of it. I, I think that that really illustrates um, the danger of taking an, and I think it's exactly eleven seconds if I'm if memory serves. Taking an eleven second clip and making that the news story because. Based on on what you're saying, it sounds like you and Rogers, who you know disagree on the bill, obviously, uh, yep. weren't arguing with one another. You weren't trying to talk over one another, and uh, in in the clip, it sounds like you are, and so that really changes some of the context as well. And so, just I can't, I guess what I want to dig into is because there are people that that may not want to go to a Martin Luther King school. I 
personally wouldn't have a problem with it. I don't know if you would either. And, and I want to make it clear that I would not either. I've got four right. wonderful grandchildren, and they've gone to all kinds of schools named all, after all races, everything else in their career. So my oldest is 22 years old, so she's she's a senior in college. My next one is a senior in college also, and they've been to you know schools. That, and I would go to any name school. Martin Luther King is fine. That, that, that doesn't matter to me, especially Martin Luther King, because, you know, I, I highly admire that what he accomplished in his lifetime it was amazing. Uh, and I think he's probably one of the most venerated, uh, well-known uh, figures in the history of, of African-Americans and the black race. I, I just think he's a, he's a wonderful example. So I would, I would be happy to have my grandkids going to Martin Luther King school. So I, you know, that, and I think he, the the press, uh, the, the the critical press, the ones that are stretching the story, um, are trying to make it something that I was suggesting that there are people out there, and they were thinking skinheads, you name all the radical hard right groups out there, right, the militias and everybody else, and that wasn't that wasn't it was a simple question. Would you agree? that there are probably be people out there that wouldn't want to go to a Martin Luther King school either. Probably was a mistake, Caleb. Uh, probably should not have mentioned it at all, just, mm. just on my silence. But, you know, when you're in a, in a battle like that, for I was on that podium for almost 90 minutes, standing in a podium. So, you, you know, you, you, I, I would be shocked if I didn't make some mistakes in that 90 minutes, and that was, that was one. Uh, mm. But I, I, looking back, I don't, I don't know. It, it seemed like a fairly innocuous question to me. Well, and it sounds like even John Rogers felt like it was pretty innocuous based on his yeah. reaction. Uh, right. But but one thing that I was going to uh, point out, one thing that I did point out, because for the audience who doesn't know, this is the first time you and I have talked about this. You're getting my live reaction on air. We haven't like, you know, planned this out or anything. But, you know, days ago when all this, this story broke, I said, doesn't him saying the words, quote, other people imply that he's not one of the people that would feel this way? Well, you would think, yeah. And, and but I mean, uh, unfortunately, it seems like this is just another case of the media and the left trying to uh, specifically zero in on and, and make something make it into something racial that that you didn't you know intend for that to be. Um, no, the, this bill has nothing to do with race. This this bill is designed to pe- protect all monuments: the Rosa Parks monument, the Martin Luther King monuments. It's designed mm-hmm. to protect all historic monuments. They are our history. If we don't preserve our history, you know the old saying: we're doomed to repeat it. If no, we don't learn from our history. Um, no, I agree. But uh, Josh Moon of Ale Political Reporter, he was the one that actually released the the sound clip that went viral, and mm-hmm. this was what he said of it. And I just kind of wanted to get your reaction to this. So okay. this is Josh Moon quote: "People like Mike Holmes don't care about Confederate monuments. They want them in high traffic areas where black citizens will see them. They want black kids to sit inside buildings named after slave owners." because it's about power, and losing those statues or watching those schools' names be changed is a sign of lost power. So that's how he categorized it. I can't imagine anybody talking about Mike Holmes as being hungry for power. You know, I, they, I grudgingly agreed to serve when I was the, my constituents demanded I run for office eight years ago, and it's been one of the roughest eight years of my life. I'm not, I'm not sorry I did. But I am glad that this is my last year. I'm not going to run for re-election. It just takes too much of a toll on you. Um, I, I have no. I'm 79 years old. What kind of power do I want? I mean, I've, I've accomplished a lot in my lifetime. And I'm proud of it. And I, I, I'm not hungry for any kind of power. That's ridiculous. You know, and I can actually attest to that because I've known you for a number of years, and I can remember. I think one of the maybe just the second or third interview I ever did with you, you were talking about how you had no intentions of running for office again. Now, eventually, you did. But I, you know, most of the time politicians will leave that up in the air because they want to keep the suspense going. They want to keep the media continue to be interested. And uh, you were like, nope, don't want to run. Don't, don't have any intention of going into office again. So you did the opposite. And, and you're right. It, it is kind of absurd that Josh Moon is trying to draw that to um, you having a, a thirst for power and, and wanting white people in general to be in power. I, I thought that that was a little bit silly myself. It really is. It really is. I, I have not taken Josh Moon seriously in the last, well, ever since he left the Montgomery Advertiser and kind of went out on his own. He just got, he just swung so far to the left that I couldn't believe anything he said. You know, I just I thought, I don't need this anymore, so I haven't paid much attention to him. 
Well, it's funny because I, I, I'm kind of in the same boat with you. I haven't taken Josh Moon seriously in years, actually long before he left the Montgomery Advertiser. And well, the yeah, thing, he thing is, pretty radical before he left. You're right. Yeah, the, the thing is, though, he's a pretty decent uh, investigative journalist. It's just his opinion pieces when he starts talking about politics are awful. And now they put him at Alabama Political Reporter where that's all he does. So uh, they yep. took the, the worst part of Josh Moon. Um, but is. but I do want to dig into the actual issues and, and help people understand, because I don't want to spend all of our time here on that one quote. Uh, okay. So, so the bill that you guys were discussing, the the Confederate Monument Preservation Bill, what did those actually do? Uh, what 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 would change? Uh, what would this bill change about the the law as it stands right now? Well, the law that stands right now is a, a bill we passed in 2017 that was also called uh, the uh, Monuments Preservation Act of 2017, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it there was a big uh, floor battle and. Uh, the compromise that the sponsor Gerald Allen, and Senator Gerald Allen, compromised a lot right toward the end. It's like now it was everything was critical. It was the last few days winding down. We've got to get it out now. And he made some compromises that weakened the bill dramatically. Mm -hmm. And we, we, I wound up voting for it in the House because it was the only game in town. And we were all very concerned at that point. Do you remember what was going on back in 2017? It was kind of the beginning of all these riots and burning our cities and and the destroying monuments and that sort of thing was, was seen to be ramping up. We'd had some instances in Alabama, so we were all concerned about trying to make some take some action that might head off some of that. So it went ahead and passed, but it had it had some glaring weaknesses in it, and we started proving that over the next three years. Our own attorney general started pointing out those weaknesses to us, that his hands were tied in a lot of cases on prosecutions, on the fines were, were meaningless the way they were set up, and so on and so forth. So this bill sets out to try to strengthen and enhance that bill. And uh, also, uh, he, another mistake he made is he, he pretty much cut out any new monuments, anything under 40 years old. And to me, that's just wrong. We, we got meaningful mon monuments out there that are being built every day. Not as many as we used to, I admit, but um, there's still monuments going up. And a lot of those have to do with the civil rights struggle uh, that's, that are still going up. And the Rosa Parks one there in Montgomery is a great example. Uh, that that uh, monument would not be protected under the 2017. Uh, this bill would protect that one. It would protect all monuments, uh, whether they're Catholic priests that they're tearing down in San Francisco to Thomas Jefferson and Washington, all the ones there after now uh, that are, you know, has nothing to do with the Civil War. These are all American Revolution, uh, United States founders that we're tearing down their statues and a lot of uh, sainted uh, uh, individuals in the Catholic religion mm -hmm. that are their their monuments and statues are being destroyed. So the idea is to protect all monuments that, that to for the for the sake of the history, the, the meaningful history that we can learn from. And, and that's that's a simple version of it. And, and that's pretty much the, 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 the adjustments we made. Mostly had to do with broadening the uh, the number of of, of um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, the, the broadening the number of, of counts, or of, not counts, but uh, kinds of, of crimes you could do from uh, ra raising or dis uh, disfiguring or all the way to destroying and removing. Uh, you had, we had, had some more counts in there that, that would broaden that so that what, the Attorney General would have a broader field that he could go after with charges. And... Um, and then when you do that, then you open up a, a can of worms where you got to define all that. So we, had, we added page after page of definitions of all those new words that we added. And, and then the penalty phase went to a, a penalty phase that the, the $25,000 fine, one-time fine, mm -hmm. for breaking this law um, was in the new bill would be changed to $10,000 per day. Instead of a one-time fine, it would be $10,000 a day until the, until the damage is remedied. And so that, you know, if they don't, if they ignore you, the city of Birmingham ignores you, you know, 30 days later, they owe $300,000, not $25,000. So, so they, they eagerly paid the $25,000 and laughed at it. They thought it was just, it was nothing. It was piddling. Right. That, hap that happened in the uh, the park where they had Confederate monuments that were disfigured. Right. right. And uh, so they paid it easily. Uh, so anyway, that that's, that's the, that's the whole 22 page page bill in a nutshell. And if you've got questions, I'll be glad to go back and try to answer them. But. Yeah, I, I did have one that I think could be a potential problem. And, and I mean, it, there may be a provision in the bill that I'm just not aware of that would resolve this. 
like let's say obviously Birmingham or Mobile or you know a larger city probably wouldn't have a problem with this but but let's say that this is a, a small town out in the middle of nowhere with a monument of some type and they uh, have just random people citizens in their their city uh, damage or disfigure a monument like what happened in Birmingham. And mm -hmm. uh, they leave it not because they want it gone, just because they don't have the money to repair it. And so now you're taking a town that's already having financial problems and they continue to get $10,000 a day fines consecutively until they have repaired the statue. Is there some kind of measure in this bill that would prevent that from happening? Yeah, it's not, it's not aimed at the, at the uh, governing body of that small town. It's aimed at the perps, the perpetrators. So it's their, their job with their... Either if it's a municipality, which is if it's a country like you're talking about, it's probably a county officials, the county sheriff right. would be responsible for trying to protect that monument. But everybody understands that you can't protect everything. So that if you have vandals that come in in the middle of the night, you make a serious attempt to find and, and arrest those people and, and, and uh, prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law on both criminal charges and on the uh, provisions of this bill. OK, and, so, so that. Uh, of liens on those folks that have no money, so you, they would probably be meaningless, but they would certainly wind up in jail if, you know, if they couldn't pay that $10,000 fine. Oh, okay. So it, it does aim the fine at the perpetrators, not the well, city itself. Not the city. Uh, in a case like now, if the city does it themselves, they have a city council meeting or they have a county commission meeting to decide, hey, we need to remove this Robert E. Lee statue. It's causing too many problems and unrest. We're having marches and everything else, so we're going to remove it. They make that decision, and yes, they are, they are responsible to, the, to this law. Okay, so I wanted to ask you something else about not just your bill that would adjust this law, but the, the concept of the monument conservation, uh, or sorry, preservation in general, because I've been very open with my audience about this. I actually oppose that. I, I think that it was a bad law and it never should have been put into place, not because I disagree with what it's trying to do, because I actually think that monuments should be preserved, even if it happens to be monuments to things we, we don't agree with. Like you said at the beginning of this, if we don't learn our history, if we aren't able to preserve our history, we're doomed to repeat it. And so I actually really like the idea of the monument staying up. However, being the conservative kind of libertarian-minded guy that I am, uh, I, I like the idea of local control, and I don't like the idea of the state intervening and telling a local government what they can and can't do. And so as, as a fellow conservative, I mean, you're one of the most conservative members of the House based on your voting record. Uh, I just would like to you for a second to speak to that, and I mean, convince me if, if there's something that I'm missing on this bill. Well, it, the main thing is that the, there's no impetus for the, the local governments to do anything about it. Um, and they, they would sit there for, with you and I wishing that they would do something for 50 years and that they would never do anything. They're just too controversial. Uh, they're, afraid of, they're afraid of the lawsuits. They're afraid of the cost. Uh, so it, I, my opinion is that they would do nothing. And so that's why I just said, okay, if they if, if we're we're convinced they're not going to do anything, then uh, let's let's try to put some basic rules out there on a state law basis, and and that's debatable. I I, I hear your side, and I've heard it before. Uh, in fact, I met yesterday with one of the detractors that testified against the bill in the public hearing last week, and a good friend uh, is a, is a, a, a very very powerful lobbyist and a good friend of mine, and mm -hmm. I, he's one of the lobbyists that. It, it, you, you know this that the, there's lobbyists and then there's lobbyists. You wind up yeah. after a few years, you wind up depending on the lobbyists. But to do that, you have to learn the ones you can trust, and you know they're telling you the truth, and they won't. You know, they just they're not they're not going to break their word. They, mm -hmm. You can depend on what they tell you. He's one of those guys. He's one of the ones I depend on. But he's he's like you. He he disagrees with that. He 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 would like to see it local control. And I told him the same thing yesterday that I told you today is that I, I, w I would love that if they would step forward and do that. I have my doubts that they would. They're showing no signs of it. Well, you know, I got to be honest. Uh, I I still disagree with you on that. I, I think that ultimately um, it should be something that's handled by the municipalities. And, and just because we would wish them to do something else does not, you know, mean that we should come in and, and overtake their liberty to decide what, what happens in their own city. But, you know, I, I don't want to spend all our time on that and, um, you know, I, I think, like you said, there are honest people that can disagree on this. And, and we do want the same goal, which is the preservation of history. I just and, and I think that's yeah. what's important to take out of your mind, mind of your conversation. You and I have talked before, and I think we knew up front that we were not going to agree 100 percent of the time. But right. I've always said if I can agree with anybody on 80 percent of the time, I better count them as an ally. Right. The uh, the Ronald Reagan rule, as it were. 
Yeah. Um, but you know, since we since we've got you here anyway, uh, I was going to ask you about uh, some of the more controversial bills. Uh, I know that you and I talked briefly about the the gambling bill, and, and so I wanted to kind of get your thoughts on that and and where it, you know its status as a bill. If you think it's actually going to become law, and then you know what your take on it is personally. Okay, I'm, and I'm going to have to go fast because we don't have much time left. But um, <laughs> that's true. Sorry about that. It, it, uh, it's a com- it's a complex bill. We when we first came down, we were shocked in the House when they uh, mess- messaged us from the Senate that they had passed this and and sent it down to transact into our hopper. Uh, there was nothing available that night on Thursday. We couldn't get anything on Allison online. Uh, all we got was a you know one page talking points. Of here's here's what we passed. And, and it had a, it was pretty broad, and so we got a pretty good idea from there. And the biggest idea we got out of all my contacts in the House, including the Speaker, was that this is so complex, how can we get our arms around this in the time frame we're going to have to get this in front of the House and get it passed or get it even considered in the seven or eight days we got left? And um, that was that was the biggest concern up front. Now, they've, there's been a lot of effort now on everybody's part, including mine, to start getting, you know, you know we're going to be faced with it one way or the other. We're going to, we're going to run out of time and do our, give it our best shot to try to cover it. But I think there is agreement in the House that we are not going to rush into anything. This is too complex, and there's too many huge mistakes that can be made with this many variables and this many players in the picture. It's just, it's just it's too, too big and too dangerous to hurry. So I think that's the thing. We're going to, you're going to see a very deliberate consideration, and if we run out of time, so be it. If it's got to be considered now, then it's up to the governor to call a special session and come back and, and try to try to uh, get this uh, considered and voted on. But, well, in, um, in my experience, when somebody does try to pass something really big and really complicated and they try to do so very quickly, that's a sign there's a lot of bad stuff in it. Well, <laughs> it generally turns out that way. You're absolutely right, Caleb. It generally turns out that way when that happens. And it happens too often in both our national government as well as our state and county and local governments. Mm-hmm. But uh, if anybody, you know, has liked what they heard and is interested in helping you, supporting you, uh, where would they go to do that? Uh, I, you know, I, I think they're the local uh, grassroots organization that have worked with ever since they talked me into running for office of mm-hmm. There is no more We Tunk with Tea Party, but there's still a really strong base, uh, still in touch with Becky Garrettson uh, with uh, Eagle Forum now. Mm-hmm. She still heads up a uh, grassroots organization that uh, that that has a has a loud megaphone, loud microphone. So if they want to help the grassroots effort, I think that would be a contact. I don't have their email or anything else, but I think – I think if you just go to eagleforum.com, you'll, you'll, she'll come up as a state director for them. Yeah, I believe it's Eagle Forum Alabama is their website, uh, eagleforumalabama.com or .org, one of those two. Okay. Uh, that would that would be one. Uh, and they'll, they'll believe me, they're digesting this bill at the same time. She's called me several times in the last few days, to, you know, asking questions about it, and they're digesting it as we are. Mm-hmm. I know enough, to honestly, to answer a lot of questions at this point. I suspect I'm going to get a earful of it in the next two weeks. But. <laughs> Probably but so. I, I don't know enough to answer a lot of questions right now. It's it's a, basically it includes all the existing players now, which would be the Porch Creeks at their existing locations, at three locations, and then uh, Victory Land in Macon County, uh, Green Track in Green County. There's one a dog track uh, in Mobile that, that, by the way, the Porch Creeks own, I believe. Mm-hmm. So that would be another location there. All those would be included. Uh, in this, and the plus they would add, they're adding in two more locations for the Porch Creeks, and all this going to the Porch Creeks is in return for them signing a compact with the governor to bring them into the fold to pay the same taxes on their revenues that all the other players pay, and that number is 20% of net revenue, and that's a, I'm, I'm a uh, business executive by career, and that's that's not a term we use. They will use net income before taxes. Mm-hmm. Which is very clear, you know exactly what. But net um, net income proceeds is not is not uh, clear to me. But I, I've learned after asking a few questions from people in the know, essentially what that means is the difference between the prize prizes they're giving out, the cash that they're giving out, compared to the amount they took in. That difference would be what they'd be paying that 20% tax on. So it's all it's it's sort of like a weird net income number if you're a, an accountant. Uh, and that, that's that's what they'd be paying the 20% on, and so that's that's a big step in the right direction with the Porch Creeks, in my opinion. But it gives them a, a lo- more locations than anybody. 
and they're going to they're going to be the ones with the power because they're sitting on a pile of money. They're investing money all over the nation because they got so much. They're making so much here in, in Alabama. They've invested in Pennsylvania has been their biggest one, and it's it's huge. That, that thing's up over a billion dollars of revenue now in Pennsylvania, and it's got everything: table games, sports betting, the whole nine yards. And that's the other thing that that is added into this bill. All these same players can offer sports betting. Well, uh, and and that's one thing that just in my experience covering these bills, and there's a gambling bill that comes out pretty much every year now, or it has for the past three or four years that I can remember. The thing that always makes me skeptical of it is the the band of Porch Creek Indians. It seems like they always become the blessed and highly favored party in all of this. They wind up getting the most locations, and they create um, some of the bills that have been suggested give them a full monopoly. This one, I think, yeah. gives them not quite a monopoly, but it makes them by far the the ones that have the biggest stake in it, and it makes them the largest players, and makes it very difficult for anybody uh, to come up through the market through competition, and so. Uh, it reeks of, of right. not being free market. One, one thing that, that I, I neglected to tell you is that uh, there, is, there is a provision in there for more locations uh, besides the three I mentioned, the, the Green Track, Victory Land. There is, I think, for three more operations. And the, na the name of the area, I think one of them was in the Wiregrass. Mm -hmm. one, of, one of them was in the um, Rocket, Rocket City area. And I can't remember where the third one was. But there was there were more than those are going up for bid. That's okay. Strange bidding system it would take me two hours to try to explain it to you but it, it's a it's it's a bidding process that those would be sold those licenses would be sold for so it it, it does with that move that does make it a little more competitive for the pci but there's no question who's the 800 pound gorilla in the room right no question and that important pci is it and i and i can say this and I, and I know you're running out of time for your time slot caleb but uh the, um if, if we if, from what I know now, I'm going to make a statement that I probably shouldn't make, but, but if we pass this as monstrous as this is and this power shifting that this be and, and the impact it's going to have on government, and I mean that through government control mm -hmm. by contributions. And by the way, there is a, in the, up in the uh, in enabling legislation, there is a uh, uh, forbidding language to give to any political party, period. Mm -hmm. None of these players can give any money. Well, you and I know how that works. I mean, there's so right. many ways to go around through uh, four, five layers of corporations that the money gets there anyway. They don't, it doesn't matter how many times you say they can't do that. So what the statement I was about to make that I'll probably be hung with 10 years from now is that if we pass this, and you've been in Alabama a long time and you love Alabama. Yes, sir. You're not going to recognize Alabama in 10 years if we pass this. You will not recognize it. It will look like Mississippi from, from state line to state line. Well, and I think that's what people need to consider when they are considering whether they should vote for or against this is is the, you know, looking at a 10-year window down the line and what this bill would do to it, I think is a pretty good standard to have. And, and that's probably a pretty good standard with any bill is to look at how it's going to affect the government in that time. Uh, I would like to make a quick observation uh, okay. about you, uh, just kind of speaking directly to the audience here for a second. I want to point out that when I asked the guy, you know, what his website was or where he could go to support him financially or whatever, he turned it into a policy discussion and couldn't even produce his own website or a place that you could go to fund him. And this is the guy that Josh Moon says is so evil and power hungry. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Have you ever met a politician that didn't have a place that you could go and donate to their campaign fund? <laughs> well, I'm sorry I closed that website down. That's just <laughs> I, two years ago, I, it, we, we got, you know, we, I knew I wasn't going to run again. I said, this is foolish to me to keep this open. I, you know, right. everybody's, everybody's got my cell phone number in this district. Anybody that wants it has it. So if they need to talk to me, they know how, how to get me. I may not be able to answer their call, but I will certainly return their calls if they leave a message. So, uh, yeah, that's the way I communicate. And, uh, and, and with conversations like this and, and as many conversations as I can have with individual constituents. I have another thing I need to give a plug to. I have an advisory district advisory board with 10 volunteers that are a cross section of my constituents from bankers to lawyers to to Indian chiefs just about. I mean, there, there's uh, farmers, uh, the whole nine yards, teachers got two of those uh, just uh, great people. I'd say half of them are retired. So they're 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 wise, wisdom, uh, experienced and very patriotic and want to do whatever they can to help. These people meet with me at least quarterly, sometimes more if we've got big decisions to make, giving me the feedback of my constituents. That is invaluable to me. 
in those meetings and, and those people. And, and when something comes up quickly, they call individually. Mike, I know we're not going to have a meeting, but I need to tell you this, 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 and this. And the, the, that feedback is just invaluable. I, I don't know how anybody runs a, a representative district like this without some, a group like that to feed back to you. Well, I tell you, it sounds like you got a good crew there. And as the Bible says, there is wisdom in a multitude of counsel. So it's, you know, that's, that's probably something that more uh, elected representatives need to have uh, behind them. But uh, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you coming on and, and clearing this up for us because, um, you know, I've gotten to the point in my career where I can look at a story from the mainstream media. And even if they have a deceptively uh, sounding soundbite, I, I can tell when they're making something up out of nothing. So thank you for clearing up that little controversy there with us. I'm glad to. I, 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 so far, I've heard virtually nothing from it. So uh, there must be a lot of people out there like you that know the source. Yeah, well, I appreciate it, Representative Holmes, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to talk to you soon. Thank you. Appreciate the, effort, the uh, opportunity, Caleb. Yes, sir. Always a pleasure. That is Representative Mike Holmes of the 31st District of Alabama. If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman. So if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?